Hi there. Welcome to another video in my series on working with partial fractions. And in this example, we've got the fraction x squared minus 3x plus 4, all divided by x minus 1 all squared, multiplied by x plus 2. And what we've got here is a repeated factor, x minus 1. You can see it's squared. And I'm assuming that you've been watching the previous tutorials in this series where I've shown you how to write this type of fraction in partial fractions. It's going to look something like this where we've got a constant over the first linear factor x minus 1 and because it's repeated we write another constant over that repeated factor when it's squared. And then we write another constant, c in this case, over the next linear factor. But the point about this video is not only am I going to show you how we work out a, b and c, but this differs from earlier videos when it comes to trying to work out one of these constants, as you'll see. It can be worked out in several ways. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with this particular method. If not, do check out an earlier video in this series where I showed you how to handle repeated factors. Now, the next step is always to multiply through by the denominator. And to save time, I've given you the result here. And then we need to try and make some of these brackets zero so that we can work out a, b, and c. And to do that, we make, say, this bracket here, x minus 1, 0, by choosing x to be 1. So if we do that, we'll see that when x equals 1, putting 1 into x squared minus 3x plus 4 gives us 2. So we therefore have 2 equals Putting 1 into here, that becomes 0, so this term is 0. Putting 1 into here gives us 3, so we end up with 3b. And then putting 1 into this bracket here gives us 0, so it takes out that term. And so 2 equals 3b, so therefore if I divide both sides by 3, you can see b equals 2 thirds. So that's what we've done basically in the past. Again, following on from what we've done in the past, we choose another value of x that makes one of these brackets 0. And so therefore, if I make x plus 2 equal to 0, I can see that x would have to be minus 2. So we'll take when x is minus 2. Putting minus 2 into the left-hand side here gives us a total of 14. So therefore, we've got 14 equals... Minus 2 in here makes that 0, so that term is 0. Minus 2 in here makes this bracket 0, so the term is 0. And putting minus 2 in here gives us minus 2 minus 1, which is minus 3. Square it, you get 9, 9 times c. So dividing both sides now by 9 gives us c equals 14 ninths. Now, when it comes to working out the next constant, in this example, the constant a, trying to find a value of x now that makes any one of these brackets 0, well, we've run out of values. So what do we do? Well, there's several ways that we can do this, and I'll show you both methods. Because this is an identity, we can choose any other value to put in for x. So it makes sense to choose a simple value. Let's say I choose when x is 0. But what I'd encourage you to do is try lots of other values. And you should find you end up with exactly the same value of a as I do here. So when x is 0, if we substitute this into here, what we get is just simply 4. So therefore we've got 4 equals... Putting 0 in here gives minus 1. Here it's 2, so minus 1 times 2 is minus 2 times a, so minus 2a. Putting 0 in here gives us 2 times b. But b is 2 thirds, so that's going to be plus 4 thirds. And then 0 in here 
we end up with minus 1 squared, which is 1, times c, 1 times 14 ninths is going to be, plus 14 ninths. And then what I could do is add 2a to both sides, so I end up with 2a equals, and then subtract the 4 from both sides. Working out these two terms, 4 thirds plus 14 ninths, that gives me 26 ninths. So I've got 26 ninths minus the 4. And what do we get for that? 26 ninths minus 4, that comes out as minus 10 ninths. So 2a equals minus 10 ninths if I divide by 2. Therefore, a would be equal to minus 5 ninths. So quite a lot of work there. But do remember that, let's just put a star here by that. Do remember that what you can do is use any value of x that you like. So you can use any value. And I would strongly encourage you to have a go at trying some values in there. Say x equals minus 1 or x equals 2 or 3 and so on. Just to get a feel for how much work is involved. And it's on that point that really I want to show you another method that is going to be a lot quicker than just doing this. It's by comparing coefficients. And by that, I'm going to compare coefficients of, say, x squared. Okay, In questions like this, it tends to pay off to compare coefficients of x squared. Remember, coefficients are the values in front of a particular value. So coefficient of x here would be the minus 3. The coefficient of x squared, though, here is 1. So if I do that, I'm going to have 1 on the left is going to be equal to, and then if I was to expand these two brackets here, I'm going to get x squared, and then 2x minus x, that's going to be just x, minus 2. So I get x squared plus x minus 2. Well, all I'm interested in is the coefficient of x squared. So that's just going to be a times the x squared. In other words, a. As for a coefficient of x squared here, I'm not going to get one, because this is just going to be bx plus 2b. When I look at the coefficient of x squared in this one, I can see that by squaring out this bracket, I'm going to get x squared minus 2x plus 1. I'm only interested in the x squared part though, so I can see I get cx squared. So the coefficient of x squared here would be plus c. But I know what c is. c is 14 ninths. So therefore what we've got is 1 equals a plus 14 ninths. And so it follows then that to get a, a would be equal to 1 minus 14 ninths. 1 minus 14 ninths leaves us with a being minus 5 ninths. So this personally would be the method I would prefer to use, but I leave it up to you. You can choose any value of x or you can compare coefficients. But whatever system you use, what we've got then is x squared minus 3x plus 4, all divided then by the repeated factor, x minus 1 all squared, divided by the linear factor x plus 2. This is going to be identical then to a divided by x minus 1. Now a is a negative value, so I'm not going to put that first. I'm going to take the b value at 2 thirds. So we're going to have, if we substitute b in there, we're going to end up with 2 divided by 3 times x minus 1, all squared. Then we'll come in with the value of a being minus 5 ninths. So we're going to have minus 5 divided by 9 times x minus 1. And then finally, we've got plus c over x plus 2. c was 14 ninths, so plus 14 
over 9 times x plus 2. And there you have it. Now in the next video that follows in this series, it's just another one for you to try, very similar to this. So uh, I'd certainly encourage you to have a go at that one. All right.